We are cooking now. The old coot here coming back at you with another exciting video. This is basically just an update from the previous one that I just did. How to build a fire, start it correctly from the bottom up. Egg crate, pine needles, or you could use rolled up newspaper. Then basically a couple pieces of pine slivers, little slivery kind of pieces, kind of like this on the bottom. Then I had some like quarter logs, kind of smaller, you know, ish type logs in there bigger log in the back smaller log in the in, or sorry bigger log in the front smaller log in the back then i had some cross pieces that went this way right so you're creating like a tic-tac-toe pattern right cross pieces of oak that kind of went this way and then a big piece of oak on top this kind of looks like the front of one of those x-wing fighters just saying you know luke skywalker's final x-wing got burned a lot yeah, anyway you get the idea <laughs> anyways just wanted to update everybody what's going on here this is a roaring blaze. I had to kind of take about four feet. I had to take four steps back because this is cooking, cooking right now. And the reason for that is the combination of pine and oak. So pine on the bottom, oak kind of on top. From this point on, you know, this is a nice roaring blaze, a nice roaring fire, fireplace fire. What I'm going to do is once this dies down a little bit, then what I can do is I can add more oak to it to kind of keep it going. If you saw in my previous videos in this video playlist, uh, there, re there comes a certain point when it goes down to coals and at that point you might have to add another piece of pine right or you might have to add like a couple of these pieces and then also add a piece of oak just to get the oak to catch in some cases you, you'll be fine with just adding another piece of oak on top you know it all just kind of depends on how dry your wood is how the quality of your wood how good it is when you bought it you know that kind of stuff i try to go to one of these firewood specialty places as opposed to like buying it at the supermarket. I think the firewood specialty places, they, those people, they know what they're doing it. They've been doing it. It's probably a generational thing, right? They own a farm and they get the wood from the farm. Uh, you get the idea. But anyways, if you're in Southern California, to me, the best combination of wood to burn is pine to get the fire started, then oak to sustain the fire. Uh, let me show you all real quick some pieces of oak and pine so you kind of get an idea. That's oak. Oak is very like dark brown, kind of has some, you know, whitish kind of spots on it. Uh, basically, your logs are going to be, you know, somewhere in that size, like in that kind of a, of, a, of a range, you know, probably like four inches by six inches, right? Four inches tall, six inches wide. Well, like that's like a good four by four size. And then somewhere this way, I think there's like a standard size. I think it's something like 18 inches or 20 inches or something like that. But that's typically what your oak is going to look like. If you happen to get a good scraggly piece like this, even better. Because all these little sharp edges here are what help the, the fire to catch. So if you can get something like that with these nice like rough edges, that's even better. Uh, and then over next to it, I have some pine. And basically what I do to get my pine to kind of catch and light quicker and all that good stuff is, is I just break it down. Uh, Fiskars X7 is great for that, or any of the Fiskars axes are great at like splitting wood, you know, processing your wood. So even if you buy it from a firewood place, you know, tip the guys, <laughs> make sure you do that. Like give them five, 10 bucks or whatever, tip them a little more and maybe they'll give you a couple pieces that have been broken down a little bit. So instead of being like a six inch wide by four inch tall piece, you know, by 18 or 20 inches long, maybe they'll break it down even smaller for you, like this piece right here. You know, this one I broke down myself, but see how thin that is now? And, you know, different sizes, different shapes, all these little rough edges, you know, more power to you, even better. And then if you really want to go the extra mile, break it down to little slivers like this, because this is what's going to catch first, right? And then eventually this will catch, and then eventually this heat that's generated from this will make your oak catch so very important and then for tinder i like the egg crates the cardboard egg crates so all summer long i just keep i just keep getting them and getting them and stockpiling them up you know toilet paper rolls paper towel rolls just try not to use any cardboard that has like plastic on it or like too much um you know, too much of that like cellophane-y, you know, stuff. You just want cardboard. That's basically what you want is cardboard, packed paper, you get the idea. Also, whenever you're working with wood like this, you know, try to wear a good pair of gloves. These happen to be Petzl climbing gloves, you know, but any, 
any good yard gloves, gardening gloves are good. You just don't want to get the splinters in your fingers and all that kind of stuff. So another little tip, tip or trick. Uh, whenever I see pine, like pine needles, especially like at the park or whatever, I just save it. <laughs> I bring a little box with me or I'll bring it home or whatever. And I try to, uh, I try to save it. So there's my pine needles that I'll put on top of the cardboard, right, to help the fire get started. This is like instantaneous whoosh. Uh, and then in terms of other little bits and pieces, you know, try to get, try to keep like a little bit of a box like this where you have like, you know, little leftover pieces. See that, see all that little feathering in there? Like this is better than me feather sticking this, uh, if you're familiar with firecraft and that kind of stuff. But this is better than me feather, feather sticking. If you can get pieces like this, pieces like this light very, very quickly, and then they'll catch on to the bigger pieces. And also what you're looking for is see that coloration there? This is pine. But see that coloration there, that dark area? That's what's called fatwood. That's what helps to light right? That's what lights quicker. That's what helps to get your fire started. You could also take like the wood shavings, like this little tiny wood shaving, you know, probably like thinner than a popsicle stick. You can take this, break this up and put this into some crumpled up newspaper to kind of get your fire started and get going like that. You get the idea. Anyways, if you do like what you're seeing, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button down there below. There are some links to some pretty cool products down in the description section. Uh, one last little safety note I will tell everyone is, is try to clean the front of your fireplace, right? You don't want any of that spark that's coming off of there. Uh, you know, heaven forbid you get like a bad spark that flies through the screen, right? The spark screen or spark arrestor that could ignite something that's out here in the front. So that's why it's a good idea. You know, double screen if you can, kind of like what I did here. I've got a screen. I've got the screen there and I've got the screen here and there's nothing in between uh, to accidentally catch, you know, fire danger, fire safety. Oh, I'm glad I got that on camera. Okay, so why do I put the big logs in the front and the smaller logs in the back? That is the reason, because the fire will fall that way towards the back of the fireplace instead of coming out towards us, towards the front of the fireplace and spilling out onto your, you know, den, living room, whatever room your fireplace is in. So that's why it's a good idea. Big logs in the front, smaller logs in the back. That way if the fire falls, it falls towards the back of the fireplace. Anyways, it kind of looks like an alligator head at this point. I don't know. I'm getting all kinds of weird shapes out of that one piece of wood. Uh, I guess, uh, what is it? Alligator, Wally alligator, Wally gator, whatever. I guess this wasn't his lucky day. Anyways, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button down there below. Links are in the description to a bunch of cool products. I'm the old coot. If you have any comments, post them down in the comment section. It's really toasty right now, and I will catch you all in the next exciting video.